In the last video, we introduced the problem of dimensionality reduction and presented a principal component analysis as one of many algorithms. And as PCA is not the only algorithm, we also want to give you an introduction to another very popular algorithm, the t-distributed stochastic labor embedding. Well, just say TSNE. Similar to PCA, TSNE is often used for visualizing high-dimensional data into a three-dimensional space. But there are some differences. But first, let's take a closer look at how TSNE works to understand those differences. Let's take a new two-dimensional dataset as example. This is, once again, for simplicity as we cannot visualize high-dimensional data. Well, I guess that's the idea of this video anyway. Our dataset consists of four clusters in different colors to identify them accordingly. We could try the same idea that we had earlier with PCA and just reduce the data points to one dimension by projecting it onto one of the axes. Let's take the y-axis as example. We can clearly see that the resulting representation results in overlapping clusters, which would be difficult to distinguish without having the color as additional information. So once again, we are losing some of the structural information of our dataset. But how do we deal with this using TSNE? To avoid this issue, TSNE aims at encoding information about the neighborhood of individual data points. As you can see here, data points from different clusters are not really close to each other making the immediate neighborhood very valuable for our clustering analysis. With this information, TSNE can then distinguish between different clusters even if we reduce the dimensionality of the dataset. To be more precise, TSNE is encoding neighborhood using probability values. Now, let's get a bit more into detail. As a first step, we want to compute a probability value for each pair of data points. Picking a random data point in our dataset, we want data points close to the picked one to have a higher probability to be considered a neighbor and data points that are further away to have a lower probability. The probability itself is obtained by considering a Gaussian distribution centered at our chosen data point. In this plot, you can see the distance from our chosen data point on the x-axis and the probability value under the Gaussian distribution on the y-axis. We can now see that points that belong to the same cluster as our chosen data point have a higher probability and data points belonging to a different cluster have a lower probability. Now, how can we use those probabilities to obtain a low-dimensional embedding of our data? We start by choosing the desired low-dimensional space, in our example, one-dimensional. On this line, we randomly put all of our data points from our original dataset. The idea now is to rearrange the data points such that the pairwise distance in our one-dimensional space has a similar probability value to the pairwise distance in our original two-dimensional space. And this has to hold for any pair of data points. But instead of using the Gaussian distribution, which we use in our original two-dimensional space, we now use the so-called student t distribution for our one-dimensional space. And now you also know where the letter t comes from in t as an e. The student t distribution has a nice property of producing values that are far away from the mean of the distribution. It's a nice property as it basically forces our data points to spread out nicely and reduce overlaps. We now want to shape the student t distribution to look like our initial Gaussian distribution. It is important to note that each data point has a distribution on its own, but for simplicity, we keep looking at one data point and one distribution in our example. Shaping our student t distribution to become more like the Gaussian can be done iteratively using gradient descent. In each iteration step, we aim at reducing the difference between the two distributions. All right, we are now adjusting the student t distribution one step at a time, making the pairwise probabilities between data points match the values of the Gaussian more and more. At the end of the process, we can see that the clusters are still distinguishable in our one-dimensional space. This means that we effectively reduce the dimensionality of our data without losing crucial information to distinguish clusters from each other. It is important to mention here though that TSNE, due to the use of gradient descent, is non-deterministic. This means that even though we use the exact same parameters, different iterations could lead to a different result. This is different to PCA, which always produces the same result. Another difference is that PCA is a parameter-free algorithm, whereas TSNE comes with a set of different parameters. And while PCA is using linear combinations of the original features, TSNE is considered a non-linear method, meaning that the final lower dimensional representation can stem from rich non-linear relations within the original dataset. And with this, we are already at the end of this module. You have learned about the concept of clustering and dimensionality reduction. As part of that, you learned about a set of different algorithms, including k-means, spectral and hierarchical clustering, PC, and TSNE. As with our other modules, this is only a small subset of available algorithms and many, many more wait for you to be discovered.